Hello viewers at home. My name is Aparanta Emmanuel. I want to welcome you to the Learn at Home program. We are taking Genesis 2 basic science. As you all know, last week we looked at living things. And on that living things, we were able to talk about the characteristics of living things, looking at living things based on their characteristics. Today we are going to continue living things. But we shall be looking at living things based on their habitats. So the topic today is habitats. Habitats. What is a habitat? I know you're imagining. A habitat is a natural environment where living organisms live. The natural environment where living organisms live or dwell. When we say living organism, it comprises of plants, animals, and all organisms. Their environment where they live is called a habitat. For an organism to live in a given environment, that environment must possess some characteristics. Plants and animals tend to live in a given habitat because of the characteristics the environment holds. Let's look at this. You see, the elephant is found in a given habitat because it feeds on grass. You also see the lion. The lion lives in a grassland because it depends on animals that feed on grass. Now, the environment of the lion, the environment of the zebra, becomes the same. Why? Because they have a common relationship, which is food. The zebra and all other herbivorous animals that feed on grass live in a grassy environment, which is the grassland. But the lion live also in such environment because the lion depends on those animals for food. You can also see some animals survive in water because of the characteristic feature they possess. Some animals live in a dry land with little trees and less shrubs. That is also their habitat. Components of a habitat. For a, an environment to be habitable for an animal, or a plant, that environment must meet with some conditions or some standards which is necessary for that organism to live an effective life. There are some conditions needed in a given environment for an organism to live a standard life. Some of these conditions include shelter, water, food, protection, meat. Of course, animals live in, in, in the same environment because of space. Animals live in the environment where they are protected. Animals live in an environment where they will breed and have enough space. Animals live in an environment because there is availability of food and water. Mm -hmm. Types of habitats. When we talk about the environment where living organisms dwell, it's classified into two. As we all know, some organisms live on the land, while others live in water. The organisms that live on land are regarded as terrestrial organisms, and the land environment is referred to as the terrestrial environment or the terrestrial habitat. So we have what we call the terrestrial habitat. That is the number one. It simply means land environment. Why there are organisms that also live in water? And the water environment is the aquatic environment, meaning water environment. Yes, organisms that live in this environment are seen as aquatic organisms. Now, we're going to take them one at a time the terrestrial habitats. 
the terrestrial habitats. The terrestrial habitats is classified into three. Meanwhile, I've told you that that is life on land. It is classified into three. The terrestrial habitats is made up of the forests. That is the number one type of terrestrial habitat. The forest is an area of land that is characterized by trees. The forest is made up of the tundra, the forest is made up of the mountains, and the forest is also made up of the grassland. These are the three components of the forest, or the three types of forest habitats under terrestrial habitats. Let's look at this. You see this? This is a grassland. I can see the type of animals found in this environment because they feed on grass. We also have the tundra. The tundra is an environment that is characterized with less tree. In some places, we call it the treeless zones. It consists mainly of grasses, but with few shrubs. Animals that live in this environment also feed and, and, and do well on such plains. We also have the mountains. We have animals that also live on the mountains. But the grassland, the tundra, and the mountains are the components of the, of the forest habitats. Under the forest habitat, we also have the deserts. We also have the deserts, desert habitats. These are types of forest habitats. This is what we see as forest habitats. The deserts. That is the second type of terrestrial habitats. The desert. The desert is an area of land that is characterized by less precipitations. When we talk about precipitation, it means less rainfall, less dew. Organisms dwell in this environment, but they tend to develop an adaptive feature that enables them to survive and live an effective life in this environment. Such organisms like the wild wolves, we can see the northern bamboos. If you look at that picture, you see the northern bamboos tend to have thick leaves. This is in order to avoid less transpiration. The, the plants in that environment do less of transpiration. While the animals also tend to develop thick skin and more folds. The animals also have less transpiration. They lose less water, they urinate less because there is less water in the environment. This is the desert habitat. The environment is always very hot and always not very conducive for the organisms. But the adaptive feature which the organism develops gives them the upper hand to survive in such environment. We also have the aerial habitats. The aerial habitats. The aerial habitat simply means life on three tops or life in the air. When we talk about life on three tops, we have plants and animals and even other organisms that live on three tops. We have things like moss and fern in the name of plants that live on three tops. We also have animals like cola, we call them arboreals. Arboreals, they call them the monkeys. They live on three tops. They are all components of aerial habitats. And we also have other organisms like the birds, the bats, and also the flying squirrels that live on three top. They live their full life and their full potentials. They breathe, they feed everything in the atmosphere. All these organisms are classified under the aerial habitats. Yes, you can see. Then the second type of habitat is the one we refer to as the aquatic habitat. The aquatic habitat. The aquatic habitat simply means life in water. Aqua means water and tick means life. That's the aquatic habitat, surviving in water. So organisms develop a feature that gives them the privilege to live an effective life in water. Organisms like fish tend to have fins. They develop tails. They develop gills. The gills is used to exchange oxygen for breathing, while the fins are used to move for mobility inside water. Such organisms like periwinkle, lobsters, shrimps, uh, plants like uh, water lilies and algae all live an effective life 
in water. This is an example of uh, aquatic habitats. That's life in water. You can see some plants there surviving and living effectively inside the water. And you can also see some animals living there. Meanwhile, aquatic habitat is classified into two. We have the freshwater habitats. We also have the extra rain habitat, which is the saltwater habitat. Let us look at the adaptive feature an organism puts up in a habitat. The adaptive feature an organism puts up to survive in a habitat are those features or conditions which the organism tends to develop because of its life for the habitat, for a given habitat. For instance, fishes live in water. Human beings cannot live in water because human beings don't have fins in order to swim like fish. Human beings don't have gills in order to breathe underwater. Human beings will only go swim and come out. They are not seen as aquatic because they can swim, but rather fishes live, breathe, feed in water. So they are referred to as aquatic habitat. So the adaptive feature which an organism possesses to enable it to survive in a given habitat qualifies that organism to live and survive uh, in that habitat effectively. Example, you can see the jungle. That is the forest. Now, in the forest, you see monkeys live an effective life in, in the forest because they have claws that enable them to jump from tree to tree. You can also see the tiger in that picture. The tiger also live in the forest, not because it jumps from tree to tree, though it manages to do that, but the, the tiger live in the forest because it preys on some organisms that live and survive in the forest. So boats have a compatible ecosystem because of the food chain that exists in the forest. You can also see the water, you can also see the deserts, you can also see the grassland, where you have organisms that feed on grass, and where you have also the predators that live on such organisms that feed on grass. Yes, today we have seen habitats. If I may ask, what is a habitat? You have your biology and your papers. Write down. What did I say about habitats? A habitat is the natural environment where plants and animals survive. Where plants and animals live. That is a habitat. Say there are two main types of habitats. So we have the terrestrial habitat and we have the aquatic habitat. And we say under the terrestrial habitat, we have the desert. We we'll also have the forest, and we we'll also have the, the mountains. Those are under the terrestrial habitat. And we we'll also have the aquatic habitat, which is the second type of habitat. The aquatic habitat means life in water. Yes, we we'll also looked at the components of a habitat. We we'll said for a, an animal to live, and do well in a habitat that that environment or that habitat must have the following qualities and one of the qualities is that it must have sufficient food for that animal to thrive. We also look at shelter, we say for an organism to live and do well in a given environment that that environment must have provide protection, enough protection, enough shade, enough shelter for the organism to be able to live and thrive and live an effective life. We also look at protection, we also look at mate, we also look at space, and we look at water. These are conditions necessary for an organism to select a given habitat. Yes. Question for you at home. Now look at this. What is a habitat? Are you answering that? What is a habitat? Write the two types of habitats which we have learned. Can you close your book to do that? Write the two types of habitats. Do it, start doing it in your book. Yes, that is wonderful. I know you're doing that. Write any form of components and organism need to live an effective life in a habitat. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. If you have done it correctly, just like I've said it in the slide, please give yourself a round of applause. But before we go, I have to give you a question for the home. 
That is the takeaway assignment. Yes. Your assignment. Write your notes on these components of terrestrial habitats. I told you that terrestrial habitat is made up of the tundra, the grassland, and the mountains. Write short notes on the tundra, short notes on the grassland, short notes on the mountains. And they want to join us next time on this lesson. By the same time, same station. Goodbye for now. Thank you.